Are you a fan of boating? Maybe you have a side-by-side and you like to take it to the beach, toss up some sand, spin around, have a good time. Or maybe you have a classic car, which has a unique interior, you know, one that's not really designed for an aftermarket radio, but you still want to crank it up. You want to jam with your friends, listen to some cool music. So you've started your research, checked out Amazon, notice that a lot of these marine style radios for UTVs and boats and other things are round. And they range anywhere in price from like $55 to a whole lot more to around $89 for one that doesn't even have a display on it, but it does have subwoofer level control and a volume knob. Then the ones with the screen start around $180. And then you start looking at brand names and notice that brands like Kicker have them up to $600. Other brands like Fusion, even more, almost $700. But then you come across this one that you see on Amazon called the Audio System Marine Gauge Receiver for $79. And you're like, hold up, this thing has got a screen on it. It's $79, got a volume knob, has Bluetooth. We have got to investigate this further and see what this thing is all about. So as usual, Big D takes one for the team. You can notice this one's branded Audio Zeroni or Audio Zero One. I call it Zeroni because it's just funny. I did test one of their amps before. I think I actually tested a couple different amps. So check links in the video description if you want to see that. But here's the box. It looks very retail. We put it on the little turntable here. It's spinning around. We can see all these freaking features. Supports MP3, MP4, MP5, WMA music format, video formats. Has USB, AM, FM radio. Pretty much everything except for the kitchen sink. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Let's take it out of the box and find out what kind of goodies are inside. See, we have the manual. Here it is, user manual. And it's very short and the mounting instructions are not even right because it shows you mount like a wall bracket or something. It does have all the colors for the pinouts on the back and the Molex plugs. Here's the mount, which goes on the back of the unit. And there's a bag of screws and hardware in order, in order to mount it as well. Also included is the Molex plug, which has the speaker wires as well as the power and ground remote turn on and all that. Then we have this really cheap credit card size remote, which uh, yeah, you're gonna lose that really quick. And here's the head unit. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. If you'll notice, it's got a volume knob. It's got a pretty nice size screen. And on the back, it does have this gauge pod style. It's a three inch standard size for the gauge pods where you can actually just slide this in in marine applications a lot of the utvs have this as well here on the back you can see aux input left and right we also have rear rca outputs also a subwoofer output which is green in color it's just a single then we have video out and video in composite style via rca as well so this thing's kind of loaded in addition having a USB input for your thumb drive, etc. Overall, the unit looks pretty nice. Um, didn't really have any complaints with the looks. And of course, I love a volume knob instead of having to push buttons for up and down volume. It also is a multi-selector. It does control other things as well. So once you plug it into power, you'll get the welcome screen and then it'll immediately go kind of to the clock. So once you power it on, just by pushing the select button in the middle, it'll go to the last setting where you've been. Speaking of settings, let's check out the settings. If we hit the menu, scroll over to settings, you can see multiple options for the radio area, America or Europe. The time you can set, 12 or 24 hours. To set the video to power NTSC. You can set the color, the steering wheel controls as well as the language. And then if you go between the modes, you can go between the radio, also the USB, and hit it again, you go to Bluetooth, and finally you go to the aux input. Now, in order to do the radio tuning, it is a little kind of tricky to do this. If you hit the button on the bottom right, the channel button, it'll let you go between those. And it's a little funky because you can actually go up and down. You can set the auto music search and it'll select them automatically. But it's a little clunky in operation and how it worked, unfortunately. As for the USB function, this thing does support a ton of different files as far as MP3s, WMAs, uh, MP4s for video. It supports a whole lot, uh, FLAC, WAVE, 
things like that. I went through a lot of the different settings here and even showed some video. These are MP4s, and I'm not going to let you hear the audio here, but they did work fine, and it looked pretty good on the screen. Now, these are 4x3 videos, and this screen appears to be 4x3 to me, not 16x9 that it states that it is. As for Bluetooth operation, pretty simple. Just get into the Bluetooth mode, and then get out your phone or your Bluetooth device. You'll see it shows up as CarBT. Touched that on the device and allowed it to sync my contacts. And here you go. Spotify. It's really cool here on Spotify. It actually shows the artist, the song, and the album, which is nice on the display here. It will do the same through USB as long as you have the files tagged properly. Now the built-in amplifier. Let's try the power output test because it doesn't tell us how much power it's rated to do. And even if it did, we'd still want to try it. So let's try four ohms. This is a four channel amplifier. We're testing two of the channels. The other two are loaded down with resistors. So here we go, one kilohertz track, certified as 1% distortion, 12 watts per channel. So 12 watts times four, not too bad. Let's try it uncertified up to clipping. Expect to be probably about the same. And here we go. 12 and 13, so just slightly a little bit more, right at 14 volts. Then we'll try the dynamic burst test, 14 and 15 at 14.15 volts. Now we're not sure if it's rated at two ohms, but we tried it anyway. So let's try two ohms in the four channel mode. See what we get, certified test first, right around 14 volts of input. And here we go, there you go. Almost 20, 19 and 18 watts. Again, that's times four. That's pretty good. Uncertified to clipping. Here we go. One kilohertz track dropping a little bit below 14 volts, right at 20 watts per channel. I can tell you though, the amp got kind of hot. This um, circular part of the back of the amp that has a heat sink, it got pretty hot, especially on the two ohm test. I will show a flare. A little bit later so you can see that dynamically again right around 20 watts per channel now let's try the line level output for rca and the thd of the rear and here we're going to put it on the panasonic thd meter you can see we got around one volt rms at 0.55 percent thd that's actually better than i thought it would do one volt is too bad i wish it was a little higher it is what it is but at a little bit lower voltage, 0.8, the THD is very low at 0.15% THD. Now let's try the subwoofer output and see how it measures. So it looks like we have to ramp the subwoofer volume up using the uh, head unit. The mode, if you hold it down, is a negative on the subwoofer and the band is a positive. So I'm going to do the band, hold it in, see the sub volume counting up. You see on the DD1, we're all the way up to 20. Looks like we got a little bit of distortion there. Let's back it down to 19. 19, we're clean, no distortion. The Panasonic will not measure distortion at 40 hertz, but it will measure the voltage. So let's turn it up. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So at volume 20, we're at right in the middle, which is at three volt range. That's a little bit over a volt and a half. Let's drop it to 19 because that's where it was still clean. Still about 1.4 volts of output for your subwoofer. Now we get out the FLIR and check out the temperature. You can see the heat sink on the back, 113 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Uh, it felt like it was really warm. So this is probably normal though for an amp like this. So I don't think that was out of the question. Let's try the pros and cons of this head unit. It's inexpensive. It has a four channel internal amp, a rotary volume that I like. Bluetooth has RCA outputs as well as a subwoofer out. 
subwoofer level control, even though it's a little clunky, it has a lot of different audio and video file support. It also has video in and out. That way you can hook up a camera if you'd like, and you can also send it to like a screen or something if you want. As far as the cons, the interface operation is kind of clunky. It has a lot of multi-purpose buttons that it doesn't really tell you what they do. One volt for the RCA outputs is kind of low. Video playback on some files is a little bit clunky. The wireless remote, you're going to lose it. It's very small. Reliability and longevity, I'm not sure if this thing is going to actually last in an environment where you've got a lot of water. It does say it's waterproof, but it does not tell us about the IP rating. And with it being the price that it is, they have the cut corner somewhere. So overall, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. I just noticed on the previous test that the volume of the head unit wasn't up enough. So I'm going to go ahead and crank it up with the subwoofer set on 20. And if we go up to 40 on the volume of the head unit, look at that. We're getting almost to three volts of output on the subwoofer side. So that's interesting.